It's a hockey night in Whitley Bay where the Solihull Vixens have made the travel north to take on the Whitley Bay Beacons. I'm Adam Matman and joining me for this one is Carl Wood. How's it going, buddy? Fantastic. I got the surprise of my life today when I heard there was hockey on this afternoon. So I'm a very happy camper. So I'm glad to be here. Excellent. Always uh, good to have you here. And uh, well, as the teams are getting ready for the opening puck drop, a, a reminder there will be an ice cut between the second and the third period, so there will be a, an extended break, but uh, it'll just be the usual three-minute break between the first and second. Looks like the Beacons are going to start with Steph Towns at centre with Ruby Newlands, who missed the trip away to Guildford last night, and Abby Coulshaw on the other wing. Caitlin Morrison and Vicky Smith will be on D, and for the... Sally Hall Vixens, who've got Michelle Franklin starting in net. Katie Henry will send to Jody Alderson Smith, Laura Horwood, and on D, it's going to be Sarah Hutchinson and Maddie Wright. And uh, it's the Beacons who will come out with it straight away. Vicky Smith there, and of course, Megan Cray getting the start in net. Laura Horwood in control of the puck in the corner there. Good work by Vicky Smith to remove her. At from the puck there as a shot comes in behind the back of the net Abby Coulshaw will dig it out the corner and will look to carry out Katie Henry watching what her GB teammate was about to do there before committing herself but then the Vixens will dump in that will allow them to get the first early change in very quick shift that from the uh, top unit Carl yeah absolutely I mean there's uh, some great pressure from the, uh, the Solihull team there they came in hard fast and furious getting pucks in deep a couple shots on net but uh, Beacon's a little bit flat-footed, but I mean they're they're countering and they're 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 holding their ground. So we'll see how the rest of this game goes. Yeah, two-line hockey for the Vixens. Then the shot comes in. And a Badui, the Australian-born uh, player who centres this line now, Grace Garbert, who's just been recalled to the GB setup and very well deserved it is. One of the top goal scorers in the league, and uh, she works some space herself here. Good work by Stockers just to put the shooter off comes in. The third member of his team is Erin Roche, who's on a two-way from Swindon. Hannah Ware and Megan Burton on the D for the Vixens now as Casey Trail bursts off the bench for her first shift back on the Hillhead's ice, having returned from Sweden. Roche works it up along the boards and it's worked almost out by Grace Garbett. Came back in, maybe a question of offside there perhaps. Well, it was uh, Vixens who put it. Oh, sorry, the Solihull. Yeah, Vixens. They put it back in, so that's that's allowed. If uh, you you get possession of that, if they put it back in, so no problem there. Looks like Hayes is being used as a forward here on the Becky Castle wood line alongside Kimberly Brengen. So uh, that's interesting. That will allow Steph Towns to ice three forward lines. Um, that's interesting because they were rotating 5D last night uh, in Guildford. So. This simplifies that a little bit, having two deep pairings, but allows that extra forward line. But I think there's going to be some big momentum in this game, and, it, and it's like just trying to make make it simple on the bench for everybody, so it's probably a smart thing to do. Yeah. Claire Turnbull working it back. Vicky Smith pinches in, but 
Steph Towns gets there first to keep it inside. Sarah Hutchinson takes a tumble there. As, uh, they'll get it out with Katie Henry, which is a play. She was one of a handful of players who missed the trip the last time these two sides met at Hillheads. That was, for those of you who remember, was the emotional night where, well, the morning after Adam Johnson sadly passed away in, uh, in Sheffield. The first game of hockey played anywhere in the UK took place between these two sides. But a very emotional time for both sets of players involved, of course. And good to see them all now wearing these net guards, Carl. Well, absolutely. I mean, again, it's, you know, accidents do happen. And, you know, if you're not protected, then, you know, the worst can happen. So it's, it's nice to see everybody protected and doing their thing. For sure. As uh, Beacons will carry out with Abby Coulshaw, who been on fire. Throughout these last few games, scored again last night in Guildford. Amongst the top goal scorers in the league now. I believe she's up to fourth. I could be wrong. She could be even be higher than that, actually. But it's normally Jodie Alderson Smith and Grace Garbutt in the top two. Rachel Cartwright will be up there for Queen Bees as well, of course. As Steph Towns will control out of the defensive zone. Ruby collects off the boards. That was a clever idea by Hannah Maurice to try and break the play up. Picked off by Anna Badui. Grace Garber, very quick to get going. Yeah, she's a great skater, there's no question. And that was a, a neat matchup to see there. Becky wasn't uh, going to let her get away with it, so Grace had to put the brakes on and look for a, an open player for that pass, which she did. But, I mean, it's like the challenges are going to be fun to watch. They certainly are, yeah. Vixen's come into this game off the back of... Uh, Losing the top of the table, clash at home to the Queen Bees last night, lost 7-4, where five of those goals were on the power play from the Queen Bees. I think one short-handed, but the um, Beacons may be expecting a bit of a backlash perhaps to that tonight. Definitely. It's, it's a hard one because, I mean, there's tired legs. Both teams have done some travelling here, and it's a back-to-back -back for the, the Beacons. But, uh, you know, I think they're... Uh, they got the fire in them and they, they want to do well here so we'll see how how hard they push yeah beacons having made the long journey down to guildford last night only getting back to the rink well it was well after 3 a.m two nice kick save from megan from the shot off uh jody Alderson smith katie henry following up again megan getting a piece of that and turning it aside but uh two good uh, saves there from megan definitely she's sharp already and that's that's good to see and she's gonna have to be and it's going to be focus and concentration all the way through this game so we'll see how she fares another shot from katie henry hit megan high up that was a nice pass to elisa from laura Horwood. this top line for the vixens reunited this is what does a lot of the damage uh, for them still without saffron allen who's recovering from an operation that she had prior to christmas hopefully see her back in action at some stage later in the season and of course very much all our thoughts with uh, Nick Lazarchuk ahead of um, tomorrow, and uh, we hope everything goes well for you on that. Because Nicola recently transferred from the Queen Bees to move to the Vixens. But the whole uh, of the women's hockey community very much thinking of you as uh, it's worked out in front of the Vixens bench. Worked by Grace Garber, as I say, nice to see her record to the GB setup ahead of the Four Nations. Good poke check from Vicky Smith. Daniel Turnbull works it out past Hannah Ware and it comes back down for Maddie Wright which is a play a nice pass that onto the tape for Grace Garber who had time to fire but well saved by Megan yeah she read that one and it was you know a shot right on goal so that was an easy win for Megan but it was just not a lot of time to get that line change for the Beacons there it's like before you know it you've got wide open ice and somebody coming into the zone so well done for Megan and uh, the, the Beacons are just going to have to be aware of that for their line changes next time. Yeah, control by Ruby Newland beyond the back of her net. Give and go from Abby Coulshaw sets Ruby off once again. Gets in behind Hannah Ware, still with the Ruby Rocket as she got those legs going. Oh, she's brought down there. That should have been a penalty, shouldn't it? She was brought down. That was a trip. Well, it's, it's, it's a hard one. I mean... It looked like a bit of a nudge and I don't know she just lost her balance and, and that's one of those things it's like whatever you can do to put somebody off balance but I mean she kind of lost the puck there so it could could potentially have been called interference and to rub salt into a wound Laura Horwood goes up the other end and buries the breakaway to give the Vixens a wonderful lead but uh, I mean that, that's a disappointment isn't it a, a potential call doesn't get given and the Vixens play to a whistle and punish the Beacons 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you hate to see that happen, but I mean, it's, you know, it's hard to recover from a thing like that when you're in the middle of that play. You, you know, you want to keep the legs moving, but again, it's just somebody was able to kind of knock her off her stride, and that's all it took to lose possession. Yeah, Vicky Smith couldn't control the puck. Jody Alderson Smith darts in and got some sort of a shot off, but uh, was forced really away from the net. It's good defending by the Beacons, who recovered really. And uh, Vicky Smith finds. Caitlin Morrison up to Becky Castlewood. Laura Hallward trying to steal it back, but quick as a flash, Caitlin Morrison releases Casey Trail, whose shot's deflected. It might even have come off the back of Danielle Turnbull and falls behind the back of the net for Caitlin Morrison to work it back out. Becky goes into a corner, keeps the puck moving. Got there just ahead of Katie Henry, but um, perhaps her line mate's not quite reading the play there, what Becky had in mind as Jody. Cuts in, gets a shot off, and it'll be saved by Megan. But um, as I say, Becky worked well there, getting the puck into that corner. But as I say, perhaps just the rest of the team hadn't quite read what she intended. It's 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 hard getting yourself into those support positions. I mean, it's like she's trying not to hang on to it. She's trying to play into the open spaces, but people are kind of sometimes a little bit slow to react, and, and you know that that happens quite often but I mean it's it's just you got to be hungry for that puck and, and go where wherever you can to, to get it be the first to it and, you know try to keep that offensive advantage so we'll see they'll just keep working and I mean it's lots of game left yes there is as um, once again Grace Garbutt testing Megan Craig from distance she's on the puck now from Telford originally spent all of her senior career with uh, the Vixens also plays for the Altrincham Aces in the men's second division. But, uh, that's obviously a, a lot of these players in action here tonight are involved in that league. With Abby Coulshaw at Bradford and Steph Towns at Billingham. Jody, of course, is at Coventry. As controlled by Rachel Stockdale. Finds Abby Coulshaw. Quick release to find Kimberly Brengen, who's been a welcome addition back to the side since uh, returning last week. And uh, so he always looks good on Becky's line, I think, Kimberly. Definitely, definitely. And it, it's nice to have skaters that match your skating ability. You know, it's like so you can have a run and gun kind of game, you know, quick to uh, get on the four check or quick to get on the back check, that kind of thing. So it's nice to have speed match with speed. Yeah, Caitlin Stock's doing well to work it away straight from the face off draw. Sarah Hutchinson works it to. Katie Henry, Henry over to a far side, tipped by Caitlin, but it's won back by Cody Olsen Smith. It was a cushion pass back to Sarah Hutchinson, and then Laura Horwood put under a lot of pressure by Rachel Stockdale. Shot <coughs> collected in the mid slot by Katie Henry. Jody Olsen Smith cycles it round to Laura Horwood. Beacons keeping the Vixens out to the uh, periphery, really, out into the corners. As, uh, good work as well by. Turnbull, as the shot comes in, Claire Turnbull, I should say, as it comes in. As Laura Horwood once again, but under pressure from Caitlin Stocks, back to Laura Horwood. Canadian born forward for the Vixens, and Kimberly Brengen will carry it out. So Richardson trying to get up with her. Kimberly's a fast skater, bit of football skills there to shuffle it onto a stick, and she got a good shot off, but Michelle Franklin with a high glove save. But that was a, a nice uh, effort there by Kimberly Brengen, put a lot of hard work into that as well. That was a terrific effort. Very smart of her to use her feet like that and protect that puck. And it gave everybody else a chance to do a line change there. So, I mean, compared to when they, they you know, had that, that giveaway in front of the net where they were all changing wholesale, this one, she kept the puck in control and gave everybody a chance to change. So well done. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, works by Abby Coulshaw to find Ruby Newlands. Back to Caitlin Morrison in the low slot. That's the shot off. Vixen's getting bodies in there to block it. Comes back to Morrison. Into the corner. Comes loose for Faith Laverty. One of the younger players on the team who was in the GB under 18 long list of players. And uh, someone who's uh, impressed me when she's come up against the Beacons early in the season. Nice breakout by Grace Garber. Picks off though by the Beacons and Vicky Smith. 
unaware up towards Evan Rush in front of the Zamboni entrance. Danielle Turnbull working well also to work it back. Seth Towns will dump the puck in. Collected by Danielle Turnbull, but then couldn't quite pick out a teammate. And the Vixens will look to carry out just past the midpoint in the opening period. Evan Rush down this right wing side, but that's Laura Horwood. Poke check from Casey Trail. It's just enough to push Laura back there. And then once again, trying to disrupt the play on the far side. Beacons will carry in with Becky Castlewood and then on to the left wing to Danielle Turnbull. Takes it back to Casey Trail. Again, though, Vixen's doing to the Beacons what the Beacons did to them a few moments earlier and restricting them to the play in the corners and then able to break away where Casey Henry fast break out this by the Vixens. Into the corner. Beacons will get it away. And then clear all the way back down as we'll go for an icing. But, um, yeah, some sustained uh, time in the offensive zone for Beacons. I'd be quite happy about that. Yeah, that was a great shift. It looked like they were matching pace now. All of a sudden they came out with, you know, some of that speed and, and the ability to work together. Got some uh, time in the offensive zone, but uh, made, made some smart moves. Uh, Becky did a, a little kick to herself with that puck. So, again, the good use of the feet to, to get zone and, Nice to see them working together like that down low. Yeah, it was. Katie Henry will take the draw against Becky Castlewood. That comes through, and Megan blocking it as they try to crash that one home with all the Horwood was on the doorstep there. But uh, Megan showing that to strong glove there to hold on. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see her playing like this I, I, again I think we talked about this last time it's like a goalie certainly feels better when they're in the game facing shots and, and you know being a big part of the game that way so it just makes it better it certainly does Laura Horwood in the corner so Katie Henry works it back still with the Vixens on the far side and in the corner once again Claire Turnbull off the boards towards Caitlin Morrison. They will carry out. Puck almost getting away from her, but Claire Turnbull was quick to read that play and collected the loose puck into Kimberly Brengen, who will follow it into the zone. But Vixens will regain possession with Katie Henry, who was back in a deep position behind her own D. In fact, as she will set the play going, Jody Alderson Smith will collect, winds one up, but banks it off Caitlin Morrison, who took that one full in the shins. Um, Vicky Smith banks it off the boards. Sarah Hutchinson will drop back. There was a shot late in the game last night from Steph Towns, which was blocked only a couple of feet away from her. And uh, Zara Berwick took that one full force in the foot, as that one is uh, testing, going to test Michelle Franklin from distance. But she had to go to hospital in the end, so our thoughts are with you. Hopefully uh, it was nothing too serious. And you'll be back on the ice soon. But, uh, yeah, you don't want to get in the way of some of them... Uh, Huge slap shot, certainly not one off uh, Steph Towns. I did sort of uh, cringe when I saw it coming. I thought, what are you doing? Get out of the way, don't block it. <laughs> There's Grace Garver will release it into a corner for Hannah Maurice to get there first. Works it back. It was a heavy touch, though, and Ruby Newlands will all thought about uh, controlling it, but Maddie Wright comes steaming in there to take it off. A good defensive play by the Vixens there, who are very quick to join the rush here. Picked off by Abby Coulshaw to Ruby Newlands, who's going to break down that right wing. Pulled back, but it's picked off by Grace Gar, but it was just behind the play there. You can see what she was trying to do, but um, I say Grace doing a good job of reading that as it comes back to Hannah Ware from a high slot, fired in. It comes off Anna Badui, I think, and she's tied up with Vicky Smith. The second season in the UK, having come over from Australia. And been an integral part of this Vixens team in that time as Abby Coulshaw sends it around the boards over to Sarah Hutchinson now behind the net. But um, again, some some good breakouts from both sides, but um, we've got to be careful because this Vixen side are very quick to punish you, aren't they? As Katie Henry is uh, poke checked away by Caitlin Morris. Yeah, if, if you're if you 
aren't sure where you want to put that puck and you are you sending stray passes out they'll they'll pick those off they'll they'll pick them up every time and they'll transition so quick you'll be caught standing still and wondering what happens so they got to try and negate some of that as much as they can Katie Henry with a shot deflects off Caitlin Morrison I think off the possibly off the heel of the stick but away she got something on it at least and Nora Horwood back to Katie Henry this trio as I say work very well together they are as I say short of at least one forward line of players the Vixens as Katie Henry up along the boards comes loose for Claire Turnbull just behind Casey Trail Megan Burton will come across nice cushion pass from Jodie Ollis Smith gets a return from Katie Henry shots blocked by Caitlin Stocks Katie Henry stabbing away there but Megan holds on and Rachel Stockdale defends her crease that was a hard one I mean trying to make the pass up to Casey Trail there but it was a little bit behind her so it got taken away and now there was a big gap between the forwards and the D and I think the defense were changing so quick turnover and next thing you know the Vixens are back in the zone yep. teeing up their shots. Yeah exactly as Grace Garbutt in the left wing position enjoys a lot of time on the puck she's very good with it and is really the, the spark for his second line collects beyond the back of the net still in control Long stick reach as well. Maddie Wright. That's charged down. Casey Trail will break down. Faith Laverty comes across. That's a fantastic poke check there from Faith, who uh, was certainly not overawed by a senior GB uh, opponent there. But um, at the back then to end here is Evan Roche will lead the charge the other way. Picks it out wide. Caitlin Stott's doing a good job of ushering her out there. But... I mean, just going back to that play, fantastic uh, poke check, wasn't it, from Young Faith? Great. It's almost like she knew what uh, Casey was going to do, and she just had the wherewithal to go stick on puck and take that away from her. Very clever. Yeah. On a two-way with the Nottingham Vipers, so she's been getting some Division One action as well this season. That one's tipped in. Chased down by Laura Horwood. She's still in control. Finds Sarah Hutchinson, who scores... She was left all alone in the low slot there. They just uh, switched off and she had the time to bury that into a bottom corner. Almost looked like a little bit of puck watching there and that happens, right, when you're skating in the zone and it's like you can't can't catch up to them. But I mean, it was like leaving that that player alone in the high slot there. It's just a nice little feed right through the middle and she one-timer in the net. Yeah. As... Uh, Face off back at centre ice end. Steph Towns with the draw against Katie Henry. Vixen's in control. Nice pass through for Jodie Ollison Smith, but great defending by Caitlin Morrison, who was, was right on the toes of Jodie there as she got it away. Puck is swatted away by Michelle Franklin. He's been a fantastic servant in net for the Vixens over the years. Morrison controls on her own blue line with Laura Horwood closing her down. Ruby Newland's in some space to Kimby Brengan. She plays into space for Ruby, who uses the boards and couldn't quite connect off her own rebound. Caitlin Morrison has to delay while Ruby gets back on side. Now she, now she can enter the zone. Picked off, though, by some strong defending by Megan Burton. Just under three minutes remaining in the period. Carried out by Katie Henry, Jodie Odison smith trying to set her teammate away there. As they uh, collide in front of the Beacons bench. Maddie Wright will control out wide onto the left wing to Megan Burton. Now Jodie Odison Smith. Nobody in the zone though. She had to go it alone and in the end out them, but as the Beacons get it away, collected on the blue line by Maddie Wright. Forward towards Katie Henry in front of the Zamboni entrance. Claire Turnbull and Danielle Turnbull doubling up on her, but Anna Maurice comes in and dumps it in all the same. Emma Dixon now on the ice for the Beacons. It's a hard one by that Zamboni door because there's such a gap in that ice. So if that puck gets caught in there, it's, it's so hard to dig it out. It has happened many times. I've seen in uh, practices that the puck does go under there. And there's Grace Garbutt as well there to hold on to possession. Trying to work a space for herself. And then Hutchison will send it back round. Grace Garbutt once more has gone down under challenges. There's going to be a penalty call on the Beacons here. I think... Uh, it might be Caitlin Morrison, perhaps, who put her hands on her, or was it uh, 
that Danielle that um, that is it is uh, Caitlin who's going to go and sit then. But uh, put her hands on her back and uh, well, you, you're going to get a penalty for that. Yeah, it's I don't know they're kind of caught chasing around right now, and it's like they're just trying to slow them down, stop them. So if you're out there for a long time, you're starting to get tired. That's the kind of thing you're going to end up doing. You don't mean to, but that's what happens. So unfortunately, she got caught. Yeah, she did. Maybe right off the boards. So big uh, couple of minutes this for the Beacons they have to defend this power play. Dixon's working it to Hutchinson who tried to sweep that one home and come off a puck, but so come off a stick even, but um, we'll recycle the puck and keep the move going. Laura Hallwood will switch the play, but no, Steph Towns battling away hard. Into the corner. Oh, Vixen's behind the net, working it into space on the left wing side. Collected by Jody Odson Smith, but away, and then Megan will uh, quickly cover that one up. But good reflexes there by the uh, Beacons goalie. Yeah, for sure. And we know that of her. She's, she's quite good that way, but it was just for that split second, that loose puck sitting on the side of the net there. Fortunately, she recognized where it was and was able to get on top of it. So, well done. Yeah, Casey Trail will control and she will go for the Hail Mary. Picked off by Hannah Ware with the uh, high glove at centre red. She controls, Hannah Maurice will crawl her in. Steph Towns quick to blast that one clear and then helped on its way by Becky Kastner-Wood to give it a bit more legs as it goes down the ice. 40 seconds remaining in this period then. Dixons, if they do fail to convert, they will have a bit of change to work with at the start of the second period. Grace Garbutt will enter in and... Good block by Casey Trail, who got a stick on the end of that one. Silver Grace, who sends it through the crease, comes back off the boards on the far side. It's Megan Burton, who tried to centre out pass, and then it's cleared, but collected by Hannah Ware, and then good work by Danielle Turnbull to work some space. How she, she's drifted wide, but sends it in on net. Good kick save, but um, not much more Han um, Danielle could have done there. She, the angle was getting away from her, but did well just to get something on net. I wasn't sure if she was going to be able to get it to her forehand to get that shot, but, but she did. Well done. That was terrific. Well, that will do it then um, for the first period. There is about 17 seconds left on the power play to start the second period. Um, but we're going to take a short break. Be back with you in three minutes' time. Please don't go anywhere. Hi folks, well apparently we're getting the ice cut now between the first and second instead of a second and third so we'll be back with you in 15 minutes time, please don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Hillhead's End for the start of the second period. Vixen's currently with a 2 0 lead and with about 17 seconds left on a power play. But um, it's been a pretty professional performance by the Vixen's in that opening 20 minutes, Carl. Yeah, they took advantage of some turnovers and, and made things happen, you know, and, you know, getting into the right places to cause those turnovers and then some really nice passing, you know, cross ice into the high slot. One timers. Yes, there were, as Ruby Newlands will dump in. And that's about 10 seconds left then for the Beacons to kill. Towns up on the far side. It's worked loose and collected by Katie Henry, who strides forward. That will do it then for the power play. Beacons killing it off pretty well in the end. Hey, they killed that penalty. That was terrific. I mean, they did a lot of really good things there. Great positional, you know, great positional play, and you know, held them off. Didn't really get many shots on net, so they can, they can, they can do a lot in this game. Yeah, Megan with the save there. Jodie Olsen Swift with a shot through traffic. Work back and cleared. The flick over the top. It's going to be a breakaway here for Laura Hall. Words one on one. Push wide. I think Katie, uh, Caitlin Morrison, even sorry, just did enough there to force her wide, and then Megan. Again, with that strong glove to cover up. Just enough. That was that was amazing because she had at least a couple strides on, on the closest defense there, but enough to catch up and angle her off to the side where she didn't have anything on net. So they, they were lucky there. Well, indeed, yeah. Um, collected by the Beacons initially with Kimberly Brennan, but then control well, and then Brennan forces a turnover. It's a shot off, but forced wide by Hannah Ware, who again did just enough to put her off there. Um, Dixon's trying to regain possession, but Danielle Turnbull being very proactive in trying to force a puck around. And then again, getting stuck in, getting past Hannah Ware into a corner for Kimberly Brengen, which is a good shift from this line, Carl. Yeah, they're, they're putting some pressure on. They've just got to be careful with some of those passes out to the middle because they're not really ready for it and it's just getting turned over nice play by grace garbert with a drag back and just forced wide in the end by megan but a nice play there by uh, by grace and it's fallen back through for erin rosh who gets a shot off blocker saved by megan two minutes played just about in this second period but the vixens testing megan's resolve there and she's already come up with three or four good saves already uh, she's got two great great hands there i mean just to bring that blocker up when she did uh, deflect that into the corner was terrific. It's nice watching her play. It is, yeah. As one back by Anna Badui. And then gets it around. Uh, Rachel Stockdale it was on the far side, but Rachel doing well to battle back and steal a cut back almost from Laura Horwood, but still with the Canadian for now. We'll find Jodie Oberson smith Jodie will control over to Katie Henry, gets a shot off. It's blocked by Emma Dixon, who Get something on that. Laura Hallwood with uh, a nice cut back from behind the net. And then the whistle goes. But uh, again, a lot of pressure, but um, Beacon's defending well. Yeah, they are. They're keeping them outside, but this is where, you know, you need to get a whistle. It's just, it's getting scrambly, and you don't want to take a penalty because, I mean, we've seen that happen already when it got a bit scrambly and they couldn't clear the zone. Get the whistle, get a new group out there, and reset. So they did a good job. Puck floats in and controlled by the Vixens and Katie Henry goes rink wide with a pass to Jodie Odden Smith who ripples the net on the outside. Comes back round to Jody who will control and then Sarah Hutchinson banks it off the boards. And on the far side Sarah Hutchinson trying to work her way up but she's done and then back forward. This is uh, a good showing from Sarah who's um, well, we always know her as a very strong, offensive-minded defender, but um, in this game, she seems to be up there as a full forward for much of his time. Well, sometimes it's just a change of position can, can make a difference for a team too, and, and for the, that player, you know. It's, a, you, it's easy to get stuck in a rut, but you get, do something a little bit different there, and it's like now a little bit of pressure off and you can feel a little bit freer. A very late high stick call there, but um, yeah, I mean, Steph did have it high, come off the shaft of a stick, but I don't know, was it, was it that high? 
Well, compared to that player that it was going against, I wouldn't say so. Oh, that's what was my thoughts as well. But anyway, we're going to face off in the zone then, which Steph Towns wins. Works back to Caitlin Stocks, who's had a very bright start to this game so far. Ruby Newlands will start down the right wing. It's gloved by Grace Gar, but she can't hold on though. And then Abby Coolshaw cushions it for Steph Towns, who forces this kick save for Michelle Franklin. But it was a good effort that from the Beacons and that. That top line really clicking on that occasion as the Vixens will clear. Worked into space, picked off by Hannah Maurice, who cushions it for Grace Garbert, who will stride forward, gets around the challenge. Remember Dixon cuts back inside, finds Hannah Badui, and then Hannah Maurice almost getting the return as Ruby Newlands is away once again. Looking to counter, but sticking on her a little bit, which is surprising given the, the fresh ice cut, but so it works up along the boards. Grace will send it back into a corner for. Maddie Wright, over to Hannah Maurice, who gets something on it, but will let it sail down the other end of the ice for Caitlin Stocks to gather. Almost five minutes played in... <laughs> Somebody's shouting about the ice now, it's almost five minutes played in the second period, but uh, dis uh, distracted a little bit by the shouts from the crowd, but um, I assume that... Um, yeah, Hannah Marie's got a. Yeah, I wasn't sure if she got a touch on it though. That was the thing. But Sarah Hutchinson will control. I was talking about players who play in the Div 2 North Men's League. I should have added Faith Laverty for that one as well as she actually plays for the Nottingham Lions. She is uh, registered with the Vipers women's team, but I think with her schedule, most of the time she is with the Vixens, of course. Over on the far side to Becky Caster Wood, who works it along. Out back to Sarah Hutchinson from Katie Henry. Forward onto this left wing position for Laura Horwood and to Katie Henry. We've got some space here. Megan was very aggressive off our line there, and I thought she was going to give up a bit too much of a net there, but I tell you what, it worked for her because she made a fantastic save. Well, it looked like she was uh, giving that, that fireside post uh, uh, away a bit there, and then all of a sudden that player saw an opening, took the shot, but that hand came out and took everything away. It's almost like she was taunting her, saying, go on, go for it, take, <laughs> take it, because I'm going to stop you, and she did. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> Megan Burton in the corner. Casey Trail doing a good job on the forecheck, actually, there. Comes back just behind Becky Casterwood. Grace Garbert will release down this left wing very quickly. And send it across. Work back to Megan Burton once again. She controls behind the back of the net. And then Anna Badui over onto a far side. Taking the time here, the Vixens are not needing to rush to play out of their zone, but then, just as I say that, Ruby Newlands comes steaming in, gets a shot off, and a uh, bit of pushing and shoving going in there, but uh, Becky Custer-Wood, well, Puck was there to be played, and um, any good forward will know, they'll follow the Puck to, uh, to, the, to the whistle. Yeah, that's it, don't wait for the whistle, but I mean, just, you know, they got got bounces going their way in that, that situation there down low and, and it's good to see them be able to, to manage that puck and get some shots on that. They turned something out of nothing really. Yeah they did. And worked on this near side. Cody Alderson Smith tussling there with Caitlin Morrison and it's the uh, Beacons defender who actually come out with it. That will uh, be one for Mike Clancy to note I think both in his GB roster and uh, Caitlin giving a good account of herself. It's, I mean, she's been a great addition all season, Carl, but I think defensively, this has probably been a standout game for me this season. I, I think so too. And, and what's nice to see is that she's got a physical aspect to her, her game. And again, it's this kind of team when you're playing uh, the Vixens with all that skill and, you know, strength and skating and physical play, you need to match that with physicality. And she's terrific on the defense for doing that. She is, takes a shot from the high slot. I know only too well just how uh, hard her shots are, having taken a puck off her in the chest down at Streatham earlier this year. I'll, uh, I wouldn't recommend getting in the way of one of them, I'll tell you that. 
Casey Henry gathers. Comes on this left wing side into the corner. Clever player will allow her team to complete the line change. Almost eight minutes played here then in the second period. It's still 2 0 Vixens. But um, you'd have to say that aside from the goals, the Beacons have matched them in a lot of the areas, haven't they? Yeah, it's it's matching the pace. That's that's the thing because the Vixens are very good skaters and they're quick. And you know, it's it's easy to get kind of left behind by these skaters, but they're not. They're 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 matching the pace, as I've said. So that'll help them get through this game. Yeah, shot from Faith Laverty then right from the uh, almost from the blue line, almost steering that into the net. But Megan Craig seeing it, and that's why we had this stoppage for a face off. We'll break out now with Claire Turnbull finding Casey Trail, who gets in behind, gets a shot off, forces a glove save from Michelle Franklin. Again, though, very difficult to find the net for Man Angle, wasn't it? It's one of those things where you've got to make that shot, and hopefully you've got somebody coming on the other side. So if there is a rebound, you're ready for it. But I mean, when you're getting zoned, you need to get shots on net. So it's a really good effort by them. Yeah. Puck's work back out, collected by Emma Dixon. Banks it off the boards and it comes back in. Grace Garbutt collects it centre red. She will carry now, gets it around Rachel Stockdale, gets a shot off, backhanded shot. But Megan will gather in, but uh, again, the Windsor side, an offensive zone face off, but nice bit of skill there from, uh, from Grace. Well, they forced Claire to her offside, so the only shot she had was a backhand there. And, you know, good for her, she's able to get that on that, and it's the same thing we saw at the other end with. Uh, Casey on as her shot on net, another backhander. But I mean, they're getting shots on net. That's that's how you score. Controlled by Katie Henry. Sends it across. It'll be Jody Alderson Smith to gather. Keeps possession and then finds unaware. Good play once more by Caitlin Morrison, who seems to be everywhere, breaking the play up. Becky Casterwood with the pass, but Casey Trail will get on that. I think the intended target was. Danielle Turnbull, but Casey getting there first. And then released by Laura Horwood at the other end for Casey Henry once again. Picks a sparkle of save. It was a palm stinger that, but uh, made the save. That was all important and then deflected away. Might have been Vicky Smith who helped direct that behind the net. Danielle Turnbull will collect off the boards, almost at the midpoint of the game then. Caitlin Morrison. Back across, it will be Danielle Turnbull to gather. Comes back to Jodie Odison Smith. Tried the drag back, but that just allowed Vicky Smith to make the challenge. And then Katie Henry fires and scores. Again, left alone, and it was a precision finish. It was, uh, well, maybe the, the width of the puck's uh, gap that she found it. That was a hard one there. I mean, it's like, you know, they had possession, but they gave it away in a tricky area, and they just weren't aggressive enough to win that back. So it's just a, a couple seconds delay and they were taking advantage of it. Yeah, that they did. So Katie Henry gets the goal and uh, she's been bright in this game so far. It's a goal she's deserved. And back underway. Comes back through for Abby Coulshaw. Now to Ruby Newlands. Ruby controls around the back of the net into the low towards the low slot and Steph Towns but Grace will look to counter the other way nice drag back to get in behind Emma Dixon gets a shot and scores Grace Garbutt makes it 4-0 just like that and um, that's the goal she's been looking for in this game and took it well yeah she knew where she wanted to put that puck and it's just kind of you can see how she forced the D to make a move first and that was just enough to, to open up that shooting lane for her and then she saw the target that she wanted and with a skilled player like that generally she will score yeah and she did and we are past the midpoint of the game now the two quick fire goals then for the Vixens giving them a comfortable lead now obviously both teams in action yesterday and relatively long journeys obviously the Vixens were at home last night and then had the trip this morning up to Tyneside where is Beacons had to go down to Guildford and back in the one day and whilst they slept in their own beds, or most of them did, it's uh, still very tiring to be back on the ice just a few hours later. Ruby Newland sends it across, Anna Badui picks it off though, look to counter. 
Nice control that. She just waited for a play to unravel a bit before advancing Caitlin Morrison with another vital defensive play. Comes back out and it will be gathered by Vicky, Vicky Smith who will uh, advance down the left channel. Dumps in. Maddie Wright should get to this one first for the Vixens. Well done by uh, Abby Coulshaw, stealing that one back. Tried to find a, a line mate there, but Laura Horwood was quick to read the play and she regains possession for her Vixens. Well, she fans on the clearance. Back to the Vixens once again. And oh, somebody almost losing her balance. I think it's Katie Henry, but Jody Odison Smith driving at the heart of the Beacons here. Gets in beyond Vicky Smith, gets his shot off. And uh, almost like a golf swing there. She just chipped it wide of the goal frame. To Claire Turnbull. Laura Horwood battling well to Jodie Alderson Smith as they cycle it down low. Danielle Turnbull trying to get it away from net, still with the Vixens. Henry fires, blocked by who else but Caitlin Morrison. Kimberly Brennan clears his own. Beacons will push out. Maddie Wright works it back though to Megan Burton. Again, well, the well challenged by Danielle Turnbull. Jodie Alderson Smith carries back in across, takes her tip off Claire Turnbull, but she picks up the loose puck now. Eight minutes remaining in the second period. Now four nothing Vixens. And there's Beacons up along the boards now, right at the end of the Vixens um, bench, rather, as it's uh, fired in from distance. That'll allow them to make a couple of changes. The second line back out, well, Grace Garbett's back out there. There's a, made a partial change. Poked by Sarah Hutchinson, but Beacons looking to break out, and Kimberly Brengen, who it's always quick to do so. Grace Garber able to get into a path of Jody Alderson Smith, who gets behind, gets a return pass, got a back to goal, and then some swift, uh, slick passing to pick out the GB captain. But again, um, couldn't quite get the shot on target. But now with Becky Castor Wood, controls behind the back of her net. She's had a, another busy weekend, yet still finds the energy to uh, put in a shift like this. As, Sets Casey Trail away. So Richardson back there, seeing the puck back. Controlled well, really, by the Vixens in their own zone. Back to Nathan Stockdale. Up along the boards by Hannah Ware, I think it was, and flipped up. I wasn't sure if that was going to hit the netting, but it didn't in the end. Becky Castor Wood in the corner. Looks at around Grace Garbutt, tries to go around a second player, almost does. Needs a bit of support. It was uh, Anna Badui who was in there. Grace coming in to double up. It's two against two. Casey Trout trying to work it out for the Beacons. You can see, well, it's sort of misted up on the uh, on the glass on the plexi, but Grace got it away, I think. And Faith Laverty will drop back and control. Long passage of play. This as Seth Towns gets a block on. Faith Laverty again will carry in down this right hand side. Be cool short. He does well to get it away. Gets a return pass just out of her reach. Actually, Ruby tried to play in our captain just in front of her own. Sarah Hutchinson switches the play, comes off the boards. Steph Towns is over there. Dumps back in. Caitlin Stocks will come down. That's going to be an icing call on the Vixens. But long passage of play that. But um, again, the, the Beacons doing well to soak up a lot of that pressure. They did. I mean, just watching that battle on the boards there, I mean, that was some physical, tiring hockey. And, and you know, they were able to win that, and get get that puck out into the offensive zone and get get a change for those tired legs. And then the next crew came on, and again, they're matching, matching speed with speed. And they look like they're playing with, uh, with some fire right now. They're almost a little bit angry, and that's good to see. That's what they need to play with. Very passionate. Yes, I do. As uh, battle goes on in the corner, following the face-off draw. Tipped out by the Vixens, collected by Caitlin Stocks. Comes back out, Laura Hallwood looks to get around. Stockers get something on it. Enough to break up the play, or disrupt the play, as Jodie Odison Smith winds one up from distance. It's such a fierce and quick release that she's got, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's a goalie's nightmare when the players have quick releases like that. Oh, just rolled up over her arm there, Megan, but 
saying no goal, the light come on for a brief second there, but uh, yeah, it, it was one of them where you were almost helpless. You were trying to trying to shout where it was, but you couldn't do anything to help her, but it just rolled down her arm. And I think it did drop short of a goal anyway, but um, I don't know, it maybe went in after the, it was signaled dead. Well, the refs call it, it's, it's no goal. So fair enough. And, and it was nice to see the D kind of stepping in there to, to help make it out. Yeah, it was face off in the beacon zone then as they will take the draw comes back to Laura Hallward oh, tried to set up Katie Henry it was going to go short side on the blocker side Turnbull so I should say Claire Turnbull of course as uh, she chases it down comes back oh just took a bounce on Caitlin Morrison couldn't quite keep it in Vicky Smith quick to play the puck forward and find Claire Turnbull on this near side but the whistle's gone and the puck's ended up in the bench so we're going to face off just outside the Vixen zone 4.21 to go but the positive uh, passenger play that from the Beacons good shift they did I mean they were in the offensive zone and just couldn't quite keep it in but it got to somebody who was able to at least stop it from going all the way back so they, they kept kept control in the uh, neutral zone and got the face off and reset so it was uh, some quick hands to save it yeah uh, we're going to face off then in front of the Beacons bench we'll go again Anna Badui and Becky Castlewood to take the draw Grace Garbutt battles well Faith Laverty helps it on its way then Danielle Turnbull carries it back in gets in behind Sarah Hutchinson plays it across but Nobody in the low slot for the pass, unfortunately, but Grace Garbutt now works it well out wide. Evan Roche, poke check coming in from Caitlin Morrison, steals it back, banks it off the boards, and now it's one-on-one -on -one against Faith Laverty. Nice pass across to Casey Trail, who fires straight into a logo, oh, high up in the chest of Michelle Franklin, who made the save, but uh, it was a fantastic pass by Caitlin Morrison, who was uh, bursting down that left wing. Yeah, that was terrific. Uh, great wherewithal to see Casey uh, making her way to the net there. And that was a, a great shot. She put some uh, heat on that one. So Oli did a great job to save that. Yeah, yeah, she did. She's a strong goalie, Michelle Franklin. And they had a, a great career over the years for the Vixens. Very soft will take place and on the far side. It's Steph Towns who goes in for a Beacons. Emma Dixon keep, tries to keep it inside, but Stockers has to retreat as the Vixens push out. Megan Burton will go back in. She'll gather in the corner. Off the boards, beyond the back of the net. Forward, helped on by Bobber Horwood to release Katie Henry. Cross. Oh, it's a fantastic finish by uh, Jodie Olison smith It looked like a backhand. She was going wide of a goal and looked like she gone almost too far but that backhand shot just seemed to uh, flick it into the top of the net and that was some finish by the GB captain that was incredible wow great shooting you know she obviously meant to do that but it was just unlucky coming out of the uh, offensive zone for the beacons because it was a either a pass or a shot out of the corner which got tipped by one of the beacons which put it out of reach of everybody else except for the breaking two Vixens that took advantage of that. Unfortunate, but you know, that's that's what makes the Vixens so good is they'll take advantage of that stuff. Yeah, they will. And they've got the quality to execute it. As Emma Dixon controls on the blue line, comes back out. The uh, Katie Henry just has to skate around the official. Rachel Stock down in the corner now, getting caught between two Vixens players though they'll try and crash home another one here but again Beacons doing well to support Megan there shrinking the ice shot comes in it pops out of the glove but she gets it away and then Steph Town's able to gather up the loose puck around the boards but picked off by Laura Horwood and again still with the Vixens Beacons having difficulty in trying to clear the zone right now Jody works it across back off the goal and then to Casey Henry across to Jodie Odison smith who sweeps that one towards Ned. She was just grabbed it in on her reach there, didn't she? And then, uh, again, released it quickly, but popped up. But 
Megan able to make the save. Yeah, it was a high shot. It was going straight for so it was good that she was able to control that rebound because it was, you know, she had to stretch to catch that one. But I mean, again, these Vixens are moving that puck around really well and they're all finding each other and it just takes, you know, one quick shot, anything can happen. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, Vicky Smith sends it around the boards, comes off the, uh, the corner, back into play. Vicky Smith will control. Back to Hannah Ware, who winds one up again. A lot of traffic in front of her net. Claire Turnbull does well to get it away. She blocked it initially and then played it over to the boards. Caitlin Morrison again in the corner to Claire Turnbull. Banks it off the boards and across to Casey Trail, who controls. Pressure coming in from Anna Maurice. Grace Garbert now enters the zone. Challenge from Caitlin Morrison was enough to put her off there. Sarah Hutchinson now on that right wing side. Less than two minutes remaining in the period. Anna Maurice will go again. Caitlin Morrison, though, is the proverbial brick wall that she runs into. And she stops her from advancing. Faith Laverty gets the shot off. Kimberly Brennan blocks it. Sarah Hutchinson can't quite keep it in as Casey Trail collides with it. Beacons trying to force her way out the zone and have done so. Casey will dump it in. That'll allow Kimberly to chase it down. Comes back out. Casey will gather. Just over a minute remaining in the period now. Over to Emma Dixon. Forward towards Becky Castle Wood. On these near boards, Casey Trail again will dump in. Allow maybe a couple of line changes here. Over on the far side, Caitlin Stocks forward to Danielle Turnbull. Sarah Hutchinson dumps in. Emma Dixon. Over on to the far side. Forward to Laverty. They will pick that one off. Maddie Wright now. Towards Jodie Odison Smith, sends it forward. Katie Henry carries in. Nice work, though, by Danielle Turnbull to tie her up and try to force it over a line. And then Emma Dixon will. Gets it out. That will do it then for the second period as it's dumped back in. But, um, well, it, it was a tough one, really. I mean, uh, the first half of it. Beacons did well, I thought, matched the, Be uh, the Vixens in many ways, but then um, obviously those, uh, those three quick-fire goals have taken the game away from them a little bit. Well, just bounces not going their way, just kind of unlucky situations, not being able to control loose, loose pucks, and then just some of the passes not going where they, they want them to go, and, and just the Vixens will... They're just very good at capitalizing on the mistakes, and that's that's how they're winning this game right now. That they are. Well, we're going to take a very short break. Be back with you in two and a half minutes' time, so please don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Hill Edge then for the start of the third and final period. The Solihull Vixens with a 5 nothing lead, Carl. And really, we're just saying off air, they've, they've been good money for it, really, haven't they? Yeah, like, I, they're playing some good hockey, but at the same time, you know, they're making some mistakes. And Vixens just know how to, how to capitalize on that. Yeah. They just got to keep the work ethic up and, you know, stay, stay unified, work together, believe in each other. Yeah, as Ruby Newlands will put the Vixens defence under a bit of pressure, but Katie Henry gets there first. Comes back out to Sarah Hutchinson, who sends it across to Laura Horwood now. Laura will carry in Ontario Bourne forward, who's, uh, I think she's part of the GB setup now. Megan Burton banks off the boards. Laura once again will control in the corner. Hannah Ware's open, but the shot will come in from the uh, other side from Megan Burton. Megan will hold on, but uh, again, straight from the opening pub drop, it's uh, the Vixens who uh, really have control in the offensive zone here. Yeah, it's... I don't think they're as tired as the Beacons. I think their travel has been a little bit easier. And they're... A, a, very well trained group. I mean, their their skill levels are fairly even right across the board for them, and that makes a difference. They know how to play together. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they're always going to be fired up for this game after the result last night against the Queen Bees. So um, they, they had a bit of motivation ahead of today. Whereas I think yes, there was a little bit demoralising in a different way for the Beacons, having been so good for so long and then just couldn't quite hold on. It's uh, over on the far side, it's sent back round for Grace Garbutt. Comes back off the base of a goal frame with Rachel Stockdale putting under pressure, but she took three Beacons players with her there, Grace, as Hannah Ware sends it around, and Grace will continue again. Right back over a good uh, decision that to pick out the uh, play on the other point, from, which is Hannah Burt, sorry, Megan Burton. Banks it off the boards once again. Uh, Turnbull working hard there, trying to get it free, as is Caitlin Stocks. Megan, you can see at full stretch there, looking at what's going on around behind the back of the goal. Shot comes in and she gloves it. That's a nice save by Megan there, with almost two minutes played in the period. Very nice save. She saw that one coming again. Struggling now, getting a little bit scrambly down low, and it's just, you know get situations where they get control of the puck but they don't know where to put it they're not able to get it out of the zone so the defense just keep putting it back in back on net and that gets tiring it does as uh, control beyond the back of the net Vicky Smith works it back to Becky Castor Wood and then Caitlin Morrison forward comes back to Caitlin Morrison again off the boards forward to Casey Trail Danielle's open and Casey finds her. She gets in behind Faith Laverty, but Faith goes with her and actually recovers well and steals the puck back. Danielle trying to get back control, but now Katie Henry will look to exploit on the counter. Gets in behind Vicky Smith, but goes behind the net. Cut back. Not really an option for her, but it will be controlled by Maddie Wright. And then back to Faith Laverty, off the boards, into the corner, into Katie Henry. Laura Horwood now. Mickey Smith goes to her, gets a piece of it, but it's a nice layoff to Jodie Oberson. Smith cut that into the high slot for Horwood, and then she in turn finds Maddie Wright, who keeps uh, the puck moving. Vicky Smith steals it from Jodie Alderson Smith, and Vicky will clear off the boards. Had a very strong game last night in Guildford as well, Vicky, who's been in 
great form over the last few games. Oh, I'm not sure what happened there. It just seemed to bounce under Megan and it's gone in. Maybe a, a tip on the blade on the way through, but the, uh, the Vixens add into their goal. Did you get a good look at that, Carl? Well, not quite how that went in, but I mean, it was just kind of the play from behind the net to get the first pass to kind of get the breakout to go out. And, and it was, it didn't sit right, it didn't lay right, and it just got picked off. And unfortunately, it, it kind of came back to bite them. And, you know, again, that's what the Vicks, Vixens will do. They'll take advantage of that. And they did, as Grace Garbett clatters into the boards as she tries to control the puck into the zone. Dumped back in once again by the Vixens. Emma Dixon has got time here as Anna Badui will close her down. Harvey Coolshaw on the left wing will pick out Ruby Newton with a great pass, actually. Ruby trying to get in the end of that. She's ran out of real estate there, but are they going to call a trip there? I'm not sure, but um, no, this is going to be a face-off. But um, it was a good pass by uh, Abby Coolshaw there to, to play in Ruby. Terrific. It, it just opened up that ice bar to, to go. I'd like to kind of see her, you know, she's trying to go through everybody. If she could kind of get in the zone, maybe pivot on those boards, give everybody a chance to kind of follow her in and then set up as a group. But, you know, hey, she got a shot on net, and that was a great effort. It was, yeah. Emma Dixon will clear. Grace Garbutt who battles her way along the boards. Gets past um, Abby Coolshaw, but Emma Dixon will regain possession for the Beacons as it's played up the line. Sarah Hutchinson towards Anna Badui. Anna will continue. Work back. Anna Maurice tries to crash in towards the net. And control by Abby Coolshaw. Four and a half minutes played then in this third and final period. Six nothing to the Vixens. Of course, the other game going on tonight in the Women's Elite League. That's the Queen Bees hosting the Kingston Diamonds. the far side by Abby Coolshaw and the Dixon has to go again as the uh, Dixons were very quick to play the puck in and it once again quick to re-enter the zone with Megan Burton they'll use the opportunity for the line change find it in against the base of the goal frame shot comes in turned aside as Jodie Alderson Smith regains possession it will, she'll go again and ripples the net on the way through Cross. Jody will gather once again. She's got uh, Kimberly Brengen alongside her there to close her down, and then Kimberly almost picking that one off as Meg Burton whiffs on the uh, attempted pass. Still with the Vixens, though. Abby Coolshaw looking to collect off the boards, and she'll get it away. Needs to get there first. She will, but Megan Burton did well to come across and um, cover that one off. She did play uh, the player there, but. Um, all good, and we're going to face off outside the Vixen zone. Some hard work there getting that out of the zone, but they stayed with it, and they, were, they, they managed to get that control. It's nice to see now they've got a face off and, a, and a, some fresh legs are out there. Yeah, Becky Castlewood's line's out there, although it's clear. Turnbull taking the draw. Kimberly Brengham's the third member on this line. Let's work through for Hannah Ware. Caitlin Morrison shot, I think it came off the uh, shoulder of Anna Badui, but falls nicely for Grace Garber. It will play up the line to the Australian. Claire Turnbull's lost her stick. But uh, Beacons will dump back in, but of course they can't, can't touch it because Claire was returning from an offside position. Anna Maurice will, sorry, Aaron Roche even will follow down this right wing. Comes to Maddie Wright. And then she controls through the zone. Becky Castlewood closes her down and forces her to uh, to dump in as Caitlin Morrison has to check back with Erin Roche for checking. Nice work by Caitlin Morrison once again. And I mean, this is going to sound crazy when it's a, a 6 0 uh, scoreline right now, but I tell you what, she's been everywhere, Caitlin, hasn't she? Literally. There she is again now, look, leading the, the break. On this left wing, needs a bit of support, but the Beacons in the middle of a line change. Falls for Becky Castlewood, who fires, but just wide of a post, wasn't off by much, but 
again, some good play from Caitlin, which led to that play. Terrific. So there's an example of that now. She got in the zone. She curled on the half boards, gave her, her teammates time to get in the zone to, to support her. Great pass across. Nice, nice shot just wide of the net. Nice and heavy. You can hear the thump on the board. So that was a good stepping stone for going forward. It was as Jodie Odison Smith trying to go short side there. Megan making the save with 12 and a half minutes to go in the game. Six nothing Vixens. No games next weekend in the Elite League as the uh, GB women's team are in action in the Four Nations Championship in Esberg, Denmark. So please do tune in for that one. I'm sure that will be available on YouTube somewhere from the host broadcaster, but please do tune in for that one and support the girls. Katie Henry just stabs wide. Jodie Odison smith in the corner now. Comes back, pokes away by Megan Craig. I think Caitlin Stocks could have cleared it, but Megan just didn't want to take any chances, wanted to get it away and to distance as best as possible. Works back out by Katie Henry. Good work by Emma Dixon, though, keeping her honest there. And still sticking to Katie like glue, and then gets it away. Good shift from Emma there. Didn't uh, didn't quit on the play, did she? Stuck with Katie all the way there. Definitely kept her in the boards there in, uh, in the corner. And, you know, there was no real real threat with that. And uh, she kept her there long enough that she got some support to help actually dispossess her and control that puck. Yeah. Comes back to uh, Meg Burton, who fires from distance. Now Hannah Maurice on the far side, who... Rejoined the, the Vixens this season, at the start of this season, had some time away. But a um, very popular re-signing for the club. As Becky Caster-Wood will carry out. It's at around Katie Henry. Then nice pass to Casey Trail, who dumps in on there. Danielle Turnbull will chase into a corner. Vicky Smith helps it on its way back to Danielle Turnbull and then across. And then Joe Jobs Smith couldn't quite carry it out, but uh, I think it's come out now, and it has. Katie Henry in possession. Forward with Ruby Newlands, who steals that in just in front of Grace Garbutt and down this left wing. Centre in pass is picked off, comes back to Caitlin Morrison. Collects at the centre red line and will control out wide. Back to Vicky Smith. Ruby Newlands is open and receives. Anna Marie's closing it down. Nice pass to set Steph Downs away. Steph gets his shot on net. He's on the blocker side, which I think Michelle always had covered, but did force her into making that uh, that save and push it around the post. Yeah, I mean, it was a great effort. Just need a little bit more support in, inside the zone there to either pick up that rebound and put it back on net. But uh, they're getting shots on net. Hannah Maurice with a shot from the high slot. It bounced out of the glove from the save of Megan Craig and Grace Garbutt looking to try and crash home that rebound. But uh, again, Beacon's doing just enough to scramble it away. And I think, or oh, even Megan might even have covered it up. I didn't see what happened in the end. But whistle went a little over 10 minutes remaining in the game. Six nothing Vixens. As we will get a face off on the far side between Steph Towns and Katie Henry. Those two know each other so well, of course, from the GB team and various camps over the years. Comes back through, but uh, Hannah Ware will clear. And then it rolls, stays inside the zone, which Ruby Nunes will get from a high slot fires. It's chipped over, and I think that was more because of a Vixens player coming in, got a piece of it, Sarah Hutchinson, who was back defending there. And then shot come through. I don't even think Ruby could see that one coming. She had a, a back to it, but it was a, a nice idea. And of course, everyone by surprise, really. A bit of pushing and shoving going on as Sarah Hutchinson pushing. Ruby Newlands away, but uh, Ruby making a pest of herself, which uh, again any good forward should be doing. Yeah, that's good to see. I mean, you wanna you wanna get in there, get under their skin. I mean, she could have drawn a penalty there. She could have put that puck in the net as well. Anything could have happened, but I mean, it's just having that tenacity to stay with it, get a little get a little wild. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as uh, face off will take place on the far side, Katie Henry and. Claire Turnbull and then a quick breakout by Laura Horwood. We'll see the Vixens advance. Jody Alderson Swift behind her. Laura gets a shot off, but Casey Trail gets something on it and is able to take most of the sting out of a shot. It trickles away and into the corner. Casey Henry will regain possession now. 
people on these near boards. Casey Trail as well, closing off the, uh, the path for her to advance. Comes back to Rachel Stockdale. Beacons need to get it out of the zone. Nice layoff by Kimby Brengen, helped on its way by Claire Turnbull. Megan Burton will get to a centre red, but then it returns to Casey Trail, who drags back. Puck just gets out of her reach with Katie Henry coming in to make the challenge. Forces Casey to give the puck up in the corner. Those two trying to untangle themselves now. A bit of a, a short, light-hearted joke going on between them. Comes up now to Katie Henry, who's gone down the other end. And two against one here, just about. Gets a shot off, big rebound. Just out of reach of Megan's stick, trying to poke it clear, but made a good save initially. Wasn't quite clear his own. And then glove by Jody, who... Controlled that well, actually had a back to goal, and it was a sort of three parts to that movement, wasn't there? From uh, uh, a stick up to a glove and then back to a stick again. Yeah, she's got some skill, there's no question about it. Unfortunately, the beacons, you can tell they're not communicating there because it was just kind of wrong person getting a hold of the puck and not seeing an open player and being able to get it out of the zone. And again, it's just a giveaway in the zone, but sometimes that's what happens when you get tired. I'm going to say that's that's what it is. Yeah, comes back to Becky Castlewood. Uh, put under pressure by Hannah Ware, but did well there. So fighting a, a sort of lone furrow down that left wing as she was trying to create some space to get the uh, centre and pass in. As Danielle Turnbull does a good job there, battling with Maddie Wright. Comes back out to Grace Garbutt. 7.35 to go, I believe. I'm trying to work out the, the bulbs in the clock in the scoreboard. As uh, Erin Roche but, uh, didn't quite connect on the pass to Anna Badui, as good work once more by Caitlin Morrison. Which at this stage I could just record my voice and keep replaying that over and over again. <laughs> but she has had a very strong game, hasn't she? Oh, definitely. I think they'd be glad that you know she's part of their team. Uh, earlier, though, up ice here in the offensive zone, there, there, there should have been a interference call uh, Becky's coming in to support uh, Claire Turnbull there and uh, one of the Vixens just took her space away and bumped her enough to knock her off off her feet I thought that should have been a call yep yeah, I intend to agree as Caitlin Morrison across to Becky Gaster Wood but Vixens recover and will cover, at, cover well, carry out even as poked through by Laura Hall gets in behind Emma Dixon gets a shot off kick save by Megan it was a fantastic save and again that kicked it away into a low slot but she knew there was no Vixens playing's weight in there and that's going to come out it's going to be offside saying the puck crossed the line and went back in but uh, 6.50 to go then 6 nothing Vixens uh, I mean at this stage Beacons probably just want to get a goal don't they get the, get the goose egg off the scoreboard yeah they've got nothing to lose right now so might as well just go for it you know again it's just it's it's confidence it's being able to hold your head up you know I mean they haven't played a terrible, terrible game. It's just mistakes, little mistakes, and that's that's all it is. Yeah. Steph Towns works it free and then finds Ruby Newlands. Abby Coulshaw's out there with her, but Puck just escaping the stick of Ruby. And then Steph regains in the high slot, sends it across that Abby Coulshaw. 6.28 to go. Coulshaw winds one up. It's blocked. It comes off the stick of Faith Laverty, who did well again to, to get something on there. And she's she's been impressive in this game definitely just it's another another example here though of like just kind of I think in their minds they know what they want to do they they, they know the direction they want to go but every now and then it's just the puck doesn't agree with them and it just kind of bounces away and you know gets turned over nice pass from Grace Garbutt to Anna Marie who was got time to regather from the corner it's looped up off a deflection on a beacon stick Ruby Newlands has possession and will look to control. Grace Garbutt sticking with her. Abby Coolshaw turns. Nice little sort of mini spinorama there as she tries to get it free. And then gather beyond the back of the net. Out onto the far side, centering, or rink wide pass, I should say, to Anna Maurice. But again, Caitlin Morrison gets enough on that just to disrupt the shot. Anna works it back and then picked off by Caitlin once more to Abby Coulshaw. She sets her away. Abby will come down this left wing side. She's brought down under the challenge and uh, looks like there is going to be a penalty called there. Yep, that, that, that's good. That one was an obvious one. And, uh, 
We'll see how the Beacons work this to their advantage now. Yeah, a bit of sarcastic applause from Paul Towns there. Who I think it feels that perhaps that the Beacons haven't had some of the calls that they should have. And again, I tend to agree with him. I think mean, there probably has been a couple that uh, the Beacons could have had on another day. Absolutely. But, you know, here they are now. They've got this one. Some tired legs out there, but I think they're, you know, they'll work well together. We'll see what they do. Abby Cole show up along the boards. Steph winds one up from the high spot, fires just back off the boards. Abby Cole show on the near side. Ruby Newlands working it back to Steph, cuts in off the left wing boards, switches the play to the left wing to Ruby once again. Heads up play all the time as Steph back to Ruby. Into the low slot, almost poked over by Becky Castor Wood. But I think Michelle, yeah, she had just grabbed it, but hey, she's not afraid to, to go through your day, she says she, Becky. Not at all. I mean, she, she knows where to play. She'll play in the dirty areas, the rough areas, and, you know, she's good with her stick that way. I mean, it was, that would have been a great tip, and it had that net been taller. Yeah, it, yeah indeed, it would have been. Yeah, exactly five minutes to go as it's worked back to Steph, to Casey Trail. So that'll be cool, short. Shot with a backhand from Ruby. It scrambled behind the back of the net. Whistle's gone. Same power play unit they went with last night. Of course, uh, minus Louise Adams. But then when you've got Ruby Newton's to come in and slot in in her place, it's still a pretty formidable five-player unit, isn't it? Definitely. And, I mean, there was another chance right there. I mean, got the puck to the front of the net, and it was loose. Bit of an opening there. Just not quite enough to pop that in. But, I mean, hey, keep doing what they're doing, and it'll come. Yeah, it will. Becky Castlewood with a draw to Ruby, who fires and scores! And the Ruby Rocket lights up the scoreboard with that one. And a fantastic, uh, really play right from the draw from Becky Castlewood, and uh, Ruby drilled it low. That was terrific. Got it back to that D, and that D saw Ruby in the high slot there, and she was not shy with putting that on goal. That's terrific. Good to see. They no. deserved it. Yeah, they have. That's a. Uh, a consolation, but they'll take it. And as we said to you before, really, Carl, it's just good to get that zero off the board, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. You want to you want to feel like you're in every game, you know. And when bounces don't go your way, it sure makes you feel like you're not. Yeah, well, let's say a heavy-ish defeat on the uh, opening game of the season away at Solihull, and Ruby scored on that occasion. Nice little spin there as the shot comes in, but covered up by Megan with 4.23 to go. But I mean, giving up the goal and ended the uh, the power play, uh, the Vixen straight on the attack once again. Well, they're great at putting pressure on the defense, and so far they put it in so much pressure on the D, are really struggling with finding that first pass, and they're just kind of putting it in areas where they can't get to, and the Vixens are always first on it. And with it, they get shots on goal. Yeah, good defending again from Faith Laverty, who had to deal with Danielle Turnbull breaking out there and just didn't get it away as such, but certainly got it towards the boards and prevented uh, Danielle from advancing towards goal and then was able to sweep it clear on the second phase of play. But smart defending that and stopping the breakout as that will be gathered in by um, Michelle Franklin once again with exactly four minutes to go. Well, that little play was a great play. That came out of the zone, got to uh, Morrison there, just took a shot on net and it, it bounced to the side and, and it gave uh, Danielle Turnbull time to get in there as well and she was first to the puck and she had a little shot on goal but I mean that's the kind of simple hockey they want to play. Yeah Abby Cool Short trying uh, Ruby Newlands there with that uh, fast and fierce release on the shot. Grace Garbutt doing a good job of trying to hurry up the puck handler shot coming in from Erin Roche which Megan will gather 3.40 to go she will hold on and we'll get a face off in the beacon zone so uh, down the final stretch of this game Carl but um, I mean it's, you'd have to say it's a, a been a positive response by the Vixens having uh, lost top spot in the standings this last night yeah and, and that surprises me I mean just watching how well they play as a group I mean I would have thought they'd be on top but Hockey's hockey, you know, people win and lose all the time, so it's playoffs that matter. It is, and I mean, to be fair, like, obviously the, the Queen Bees are equally as strong and talented. Oh, that's gone in as well. Anna Badui 
drills it into the back of the net. That's to make it 7-1, a good finish by the Australian there. I was about to say there, Queen Beza is are evenly matched with uh, Sally Hall. There's never much between them, and uh, I still think there's a couple of twists and turns to be had in that title race. Yeah, they've got to meet each other twice down in Slough. Yeah, those will be good games to watch for sure. It's hard to say who will come out on top. I mean, it could go one, one for one, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, traditionally, though, uh, the Vixens play well down there, and it's um, a facility that the Vixens, sorry, the Queen Bees don't really love. They, they were obviously originally based in Bracknell, where they found the ice very much to their liking and this style of play, and they, they kind of had to adapt to that when they first moved there a couple of years ago, and uh, it's not exactly a home advantage, shall we say, and the Vixens, uh, as good as a team they are, it's more of a leveller, so um, in, in actual fact, I, I think the Queen Bees have had better joy at Solihull than they have at home against them, but uh, we shall see on that one as the puck's tied up along the boards, 2.43 to go. Um, we're going to face off at centre ice. But, um, yeah, it's a positive response by the Vixens. A, a, a bit of a break now, and that will give the, the Beacons a chance to regroup. Yeah, and I mean, if they, they, if they do what they were doing, they, they could do it again. They, they're, they're pressing. Here we go. Yeah. Collected off the boards by Danielle Turnbull beyond the net, but uh, Katie Henry working it away down this near side. Now they'll break out quickly with Katie. Surprisingly not included in the long list for GB for the uh, tournaments this year. Of course, she, it's her goal which essentially uh, kept GB in the division they're in because she scored the winning penalty shot against Kazakhstan, which turned out to be the only game they won. And Kazakhstan lost all of theirs, so ultimately they went down. GB stayed up, but it was thanks to Katie's goal which kept them in the division. So a bit of a shame to see that she's not on, not included. I'm not sure what her situation is there in terms of getting maybe not getting the time off work. I know uh, as crazy as that sh should be, that's uh, normality for GB's top players. They all have to have day jobs. Uh, so that's cleared. Sarah Hutchinson will control. A minute 40 to go. 7-1 to the Vixens now, which replicates the scoreline down in Solihull at the opening game of the season and also the heaviest defeats of the season but good from a, a Beacons point of view but it isn't double figures this time and I say there there is improvements that they've made and you know this this one is a, a tough time to have played the Vixens with with the Solihull club obviously wanting to get back to winning ways after last night and not much gas left in the tank I think from the Beacons from last night it was a, a difficult time to be playing them. Well, oh, the Beacons are fighters, and they're they're going to play this game right to the the last second, which is good to see. And there's lots of positives to take from this. Lots lots of things to learn too, you know. And it's uh, I don't know. Every team has to go through it to uh, to develop and uh, be, become competitive, or more so. Indeed, yeah. As uh, Grace Garbett doing some good work at one end, and now Ruby Newland setting Abby Corshaw away in the corner at the other. Comes across to. Uh, Jody Alderson Smith. That'd be cool, sure. Trying to go for attempted wrap around. Trips maybe as well as she made her way into the low slot. But again, no, no whistle. As uh, they'll carry out now. Jody looks up, sees who's coming behind her, but then uh, will play in Laura Hallward down the right wing. Vicky Smith keeping her at arm's length. Jody Alderson Smith collects beyond the back of a net. Abby Coulshaw releases Ruby Newlands with just a few seconds to go. Has there a chance for Ruby to shoot on that? She will. Comes off the blocker of uh, Michelle. She just had to rush that a little bit because the time was ticking. But again, it was a nice breakout, a nice way to end the game for Ruby. Definitely getting a shot on net and just playing strong like that, right to that final whistle. That's what I like to see. And they, they, can, they can hold their heads up with that effort, no question. Yes, they can. Um, well, 7-1 scoreline to the Vixens. Congratulations to them and their uh, back to winning ways. Um, well, let's talk about player of the game. Who impressed you tonight, Carl? Well, I really like number nine, Garbett, for uh, the Vixens. What a what a great player, you know. Just, just both ends of the ice and just, you know, just dominant. For uh, the Beacons, I'd, oh, I'd say Morrison on the defense. 
I'd have to agree on both. I think uh, Grace never disappoints when you watch her. And as you say, she's a dominant two-way player, uh, more renowned for her um, offensive prowess and the goals that she scores, but she's added a lot to her game and uh, has had uh, games at centre this season. And it's it worked well to get her back in the... Uh, in the GB setup, which is great to see and very well deserved for her. A lot of hugs and uh, handshakes. There's a lot of respect between the two sides here. Uh, no, absolutely no question about Caitlin Morrison getting uh, the beacons. Megan again does what Megan always does, and that's uh, keep her side in the game. But you would have to say Caitlin was just about everywhere today, and she was fighting a one-woman uh, crusade at times, trying to get the team going. Yeah, definitely, and you know. You need you need somebody like that for sure, especially with this kind of game. It's just you know a, a fighter right to the bitter end that just kind of leads by example that way. I, I think those kinds of players are very valuable, so she would definitely be my choice. Yeah, mine too. I'd have to add Katie Henry as well. I think for uh, the Vixens, I thought she had a very strong uh, game on the other line for them. They had the two lines, of course, and a special mention as well to we met, we said before to Faith Laverty because. Uh, youngest player on the team on D for the Vixens and uh, acquitted herself well against some pretty formidable opponents on the uh, Beacon side. We shall stay on air and bring you Rose player of the games then. Uh, a reminder that Beacons aren't in action again now till March, but uh, do please look out on Ice Maidens for updates to see if we can bring you any other games in the meantime. So uh, again, uh, please do check that over the next few weekends. Well, we shall wait for the Player of the Game Awards then once the uh, officials finish their handshakes. But uh, great to see three female officials here as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, good good for the, the women's game, no question about it. And they, they did a pretty good job. I mean, it's like like both teams, there's lots to learn and, you know, they'll get there as well. But uh, I think they did a great job tonight. Yeah, they did. Always good to see. I don't know the uh, women's finals weekend at the playoffs. It's usually always a, an all-female uh, group of officials, which Faye Andrews does very well and works very hard to uh, get that team together for those events. So always good to see. That's uh, it's Amy Campbell, who has the uh, armbands on, a former Beacons player as well, of course, from a few years back, former player. As we await the announcement. Laura Horwood, who, uh, well, actually, she was the other choice, I was going to say, from the, the top line. If it wasn't going to go to Grace or to Katie, she worked hard and obviously up in the scoring as well for her team, a fantastic player and from your homeland, Carl. Well, there's something about the skating then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah, well, well done to Laura, and very well deserved. And again, we wait for the beacon. Kayla Morrison, well, could be no arguments there, can there? Yeah, that was pretty obvious. Definitely deserving of that, no question about it. And, you know, so now she's, she's somebody that we'll always look at. We'll certainly expect that kind of effort every game. And indeed, yeah, we wish her all the best of luck, along with all the other players who have been called in to the Four Nations Championship taking place in Esberg, Denmark, next week. So best of luck, girls, and we shall be tuning in from back home. As I say, we'll be back on air for Beacons TV in March, I believe, early March. In the meantime, as I say, please do check out Ice Maidens to see uh, if we do bring you any games in the meantime. But pleasure bringing this game to you as always i've been adam atman and joining me has been carl wood thank you and good night thanks adam good night everybody can't wait for the next one